What's good, YouTube? Welcome back to another episode of Life with Keezy with your boy, Keezy. Appreciate you guys for tuning in today. So, as you can see from the thumbnail, today I'm going to give you guys my pretty much my story from high school to becoming a Division I athlete. So my, you know, my journey was a little bit different than a lot of guys. Um, I didn't start playing basketball uh, competitively until I was like 13 years old. So uh, I started a lot later than a lot of guys did. And because of that, I kind of developed a lot later than uh, a lot of guys did as well. We're gonna start though um, in high school. So I started my high school career at Martin Luther King High School in Detroit, Michigan. And uh, you know, anybody who's from Detroit or knows De or knows Detroit basketball, King is a, a prominent high school in terms of just sports period and always had a good basketball team. So when I was at King, we had a really good high school basketball team. Um, it was it was starred by uh, one of the best players in the nation at the time, Ramar Smith. Um, he went to Tennessee. Uh, he was a first team all SEC as a, as a freshman. Um, freshman of the year in the SEC. And barring, barring some crazy things that happened in his life, he would be in a league right now, a lottery pick. Um, but I guess he just won in the cars for him. But so we had him. Our our varsity team was pretty much a, a Division One roster in itself. Like uh, just just for example, the starting five was we had a six eight point guard, Big D, or D. Then we had uh, Ramar, who played was a combo guard. He was six three six four, but he was he turned to a point more of a point guard in in college. And then we had a six seven. Six seven three man, and then we had a four and five Sheldon and Big D. They were both six ten or taller. Like like they were like team was huge, like were huge, and uh, they were really good. So <laughs> I, I didn't make varsity. <laughs> I was on, I made the JV team, but when it came time to take physicals, I didn't pass the physical. My blood pressure was ridiculously high, um, and when I say high, I mean really high. Like. 180, like it was like 180, 190 over 130, one, like, like it was really, really high, like to the point high to I could have a stroke at any minute high. And uh, you know, they did a bunch of tests, they really couldn't find, it wasn't anything health related. Like when I tell you my life, uh, high school, like, you know, middle school to high school was a very, very stressful and trying time for me uh, family wise and, home, and, and you know, in the home and it was really trying and I, I carried a lot of stress because I didn't really talk about, you know, just anything. Like I didn't, you know, tell people what was going on in my life. I just, I didn't like to talk. I still don't like to talk to this day. And, it, and it's something that hinders me a lot in terms of building relationships, but I'm working on it. But I didn't really talk. And um, I just held everything in. And I don't know, I think that was part of it for sure. It had to be that because they, they, I didn't have any kidney issues. They did all the tests, you know, and, and I didn't have any issues in terms of why why my blood pressure was so high. You know, maybe it was a little bit of my diet, but I think a lot of it came from stress. So I didn't get to play. Then the following year, I ended up transferring. I moved to a whole another county, so I had to go to another school because of it. So I ended up transferring to Warren Woods Tower High School which is in Macomb County, for those of you guys who are familiar with uh, the Metro Detroit area. So I made the basketball team, but because the district and the school didn't believe that I actually moved into the district, and they thought that I, were just, I was just, you know, traveling from the city and coming to school every day, they wouldn't allow me to play in the first semester of basketball. So I had to sit out to the second semester, which was some bullshit, and it was weak as hell because I actually lived maybe, not even not even a quarter of a mile away from the school. Um, and I walked to school almost every day. So I missed out on half my junior year because of the ignorance of a few people. Um, so the second half of my junior year, I had a halfway decent year. Um, it, wasn't, it wasn't the best, it wasn't the worst. I was just okay. Like it was hard to get a rhythm um, and you know, the game suffered because of it. To start that summer after my junior year, I went home, uh, you know, following the season, and I wrote out goals, you know, that I wanted to achieve um, before I finished, before I finished high school. You know, 
and one of those goals was to sign a letter of intent to play at a Division I uh, college. One thing about writing out goals is one thing to write out goals, but it's another thing to write out how you plan on achieving each one of those goals. What are you gonna do to achieve those goals? And uh, I was thorough in that aspect of what I was gonna do and what I needed to do to achieve those goals. So that entire summer, uh, I worked out with uh, one of my best friends, uh, T-Mad, you know, rest in peace, he's not here now, but he's one of the best basketball players I ever, you know, I ever knew. And he pushed me daily to get better because he saw the potential in me. Um, you know, he was one of the best players in the state and he got me right. You know, he, he worked on my athleticism with me. He worked on, you know, ball handling, shooting, everything. Every part of my game he worked on with me that summer. And he also introduced me to AAU basketball. So he played for Team Michigan, which uh, for, those who, for those of you who know who is a really good team in Michigan, um, Team Michigan, the way they're set up is a little bit different than the rest of the teams. So usually Team Michigan plays a lot of big tournaments and when they go to the biggest tournaments, they kind of pull players, like the best players from the state, and then they go to these tournaments and play. He introduced me to Coach Rocky, who was one of the best coaches, uh, probably in, in Michigan. Uh, those of you guys who know high school basketball, you probably know Coach Rocky if you're a little bit older. Um, the team was sponsored by Jalen Rose, you know, who's a great, who's a great man. You know, anybody who knows Jalen Rose, and you see what he's doing for the city. Um, you see just his spirit, man. He's a great person, man, and he helped a lot of kids uh, through this program. So, Team Ad introduced me. You know, this team, I actually, you know, played and made this team. I, you know, I tried out and I made this team. And uh, I wasn't the best. I was far from the best on the team. Uh, we had, like, on any given t on any given time, you know, we had, like, 12, uh, 12 guys on the roster, and I was probably <laughs> the 13th option. <laughs> like, I'm, like, no joke, like, being dead ass. Like, every tournament we went to, we had some of the best players in Michigan. You got to think, like, uh, like Draymond, uh, Draymond Green, um, Deshaun Sims, Manny Harris, uh, Darrell Summers, uh, Kalen Lucas, like all these guys, they play for, you know, the family or other teams, but whenever we went to, you know, or, or had big games or big tournaments, all these players would come to our team, you know, come to Team Michigan to play. So uh, our team was stacked, man. It was loaded. Josh Southerns, uh, um, uh, man, it was a lot of guys. Uh, TP. Like, a lot of guys played for Tawan Porter, if you for guys who don't know TP. You know, he played at Oregon. Um, but Ramar Smith, another at Tennessee. Like, we had a ton of guys, man. Eula Stevens. Um, like, the team was loaded, man. So it's safe to say I wasn't the best player on this team, you know. And uh, I, I really didn't get a lot of playing time. But what I gained from, from being on this team is I got better every day. You know, playing these guys in practice, um, you know, throughout the summer and playing with these guys every day. It got me better and it got me more prepared uh, to, to make the leap I wanted to make the next season. So going into my senior season, uh, I definitely made a, le a, a huge leap from where I was in my junior season. Uh, to start the season, me and, my, me and my coach, Coach Z, at the time, we would wake up every morning, come to the school, get work on my jump shot, you know, because that was probably, probably what that was and still is not the strongest part of my game but we worked on it every day. Um, every morning we would come before school, you would start and shot. Um, and then every night, you know, before, after school, after I got home, did my homework, I would, I would run a few miles every night um, to build my, you know, my conditioning. Because even now, I say it now to a lot of young kids I talk to, but it's the truth. The player who's in a better condition has the upper hand. I say, it, I say it now to a lot of younger kids, but it's the, it's the truth. The player who is in the best condition is always gonna have the upper hand. So if you get tired and the man who you're playing against is not tired, it's gonna be a lot harder for you to dominate him the way you were when you were fresh. So my mindset was that already when I was in, when I was in high school and I, and I was always gonna be the best condition player. And consequently, because of all this work, I dominated. Like, when I tell you I dominated, I dominated my senior year, man. 20 and 10 on the nightly. I went from not being ranked at all, nobody even knowing what my name was, to being in the paper every week. Every week, top performer, top performer, top performer. 
but that still wasn't enough to garner the attention that I felt like I deserved from college coaches. I still had nothing but D3 and D2 schools recruiting me and offering me, which isn't bad. But like I said, I had goals. And going to anything but a Division I university wasn't on that list. So I held off on signing with any of those Division II and Division III schools. And luckily, I was still 17 once my senior season ended. So I was able to play another year of, uh, of AAU, uh, 17 and under. This time I decided to play for a very much so lesser known <laughs> AAU basketball team, um, ball above all. It was a team made up of no big names in terms of uh, Michigan basketball. Um, I was pretty much the biggest, it wasn't even pretty much, I was the biggest name on the team and I didn't even have a big name. But the plus the plan on this team is that even though they didn't have any big name guys, they went to pretty much every every tournament. They went to all the big tournaments. They went to the Speech. They went to um, LeBron James, the King James Classic. They went to uh, the Charlie Weber uh, tournament, which is in DC. Um, big tournaments, Georgetown. So it was great. It was a large amount of exposure for me and uh, it was something I hadn't had in the past. So from the moment I stepped on the court with this team, it was the EK show to say the least. My confidence was high, and I knew this AAU season was my last opportunity to reach my goals, essentially. So I killed everything in front of me. So much that a ton of AAU teams from other states, uh, every tournament we went to, they would try to recruit me to play for their team, uh, you know, going into other tournaments. So this let me know that people were starting to take notice, and I'm, in my mind, I'm thinking if, if these people are starting to notice, that college coaches couldn't be too far behind. So the last tournament that we went to uh, that season was the Charlie Weber, which is in DC. And uh, Georgetown is the main site for the tournament. There was a ton of good teams and there were college coaches everywhere. To this point, I hadn't seen this many college coaches in one spot, period. From the first game, I was on a mission. I was gonna prove to every coach there that they had been asleep and they was about to be in for a rude awakening. For the tournament, I averaged about 26 and nine if I remember correctly. And, uh, and the cherry on top was the final game we played. Uh, we played DC Assault, which always has some of the top players in the country, you know, on their roster. Uh, this was back in 07. So yeah, I think it was Mike Beasley and guys like that. Um, you know, they've, they've had Quinn Cook, Jeff Green, Mike Beasley, Nolan Smith. They had a ton of guys, man, like a ton of like high caliber players. Uh, play for DC Assault. And at the tournament, I had my best game. I put that 30 burger on their head. Nigga was juiced, I ain't gonna hold you. Like, uh, it was crazy, man. Like, I'm like, damn. Like, I honestly, I, you know, I'm not, a, like, anybody who knows my game knows that I'm not, like, a crazy scorer. In high school, I definitely scored a lot more because I, would, I, I, got, I got to the point in my senior season where I was better than a lot of guys, so it was, I scored a lot more. But anybody knows my game, no, I'm not a scorer. So I, when I put that 30 burger on their head, I was like, yeah, like I, I'm here. Man, it was crazy though. Like as soon as the buzzer sounded, like it was like at least seven, eight coaches flooded the score table, table like to look at the, the stats. And a little later, a couple coaches approached me. The first, which was actually Georgetown. And when I tell you the butterflies in my stomach was so, <laughs> they were going crazy, bro. Like. Never in my wildest imagination, I would think that I would be talking to, you know, a high major school like Georgetown. And, um, but they came and talked to me. <clears throat> and uh, also Butler, uh, with, the other t with the other coach that came to talk to me, this coach from Butler. Uh, and this was before Butler really got on there. It was like the year before they took off in terms of becoming a, you know, a national, a, a national known prominent University in terms of basketball with Gordon Hayward, Sheldon Mack, all those guys. But it was sad at the same time because uh, the coaches, they thought I was younger than what I was. They thought I was a junior. And they had all, both teams had already filled, you know, their scholarships for the following year. So there was no spot for me anyway. Uh, but they had told me, like, you know, if I went to prep school or, or whatever that, you know, that I would, that there would be, you know, possibly a position for, you know, a spot for me in the, in the next season. You know, but like an inner city kid from Detroit, you know, I ain't got fucking 20 plus K laying around, you know, to play for prep school. And I don't know no boosters who gonna do that either. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't have that, 
I don't have those type of relationships with people to be able to afford that. I tell you that shit, hearing, hearing that they didn't, you know, hearing that they didn't have a, a spot for me and that, I, you know, if I took a prep school route that I could potentially be, you know, on the, on the team, you know, getting a scholarship the next year, that shit took the wind out of my fucking sails, man. Like, I went from the highest of the highs to damn. This some bullshit. Luckily, a, f a few other schools who still had scholarships available uh, for the next season reached out to my coach. Uh, Florida National, Central Arkansas, Howard, and Long Island University. So, I still have some hope. I talked to a lot of these schools over the phone and got a feel for the coaches and scheduled uh, visits. And um, I actually went on my first visit to Long Island University and if you don't know Long Island University, now they're the Sharks, which is some bullshit. Uh, we were the Blackbird, we were the Blackbirds, and the school was centered right in the heart of Brooklyn. Like, it's it's a dope as an adult. As an adult, thinking back, it's such a dope, such a dope area, man, to be to be able to go to school in. Granted, it's not the Brooklyn that it is now. When I was there back in 07, you know it's regentrification and shit, so it's like a lot more um, diverse, for lack of better words, but even then, it was still dope, um, and my visit was amazing, man, like, the guys were so cool, and the coaches, man, they were like these Italian mafioso-type coaches, like Jim Ferry, uh, Jim, Jim Ferry, he's the, he was the head coach when I was there, he coached at, uh, he coaches now at Penn State, and he coached at Duquesne as well. And then uh, Coach Perry, who, who once he left, won a bunch of championships for LIU. Um, I don't know where Coach Perry is now. I need to, I need to contact him. But uh, Coach Perry was just this mafioso, Italian swag, slick back, type like Bruce Pearl, man. Like, they was like, if that was like, he looked like Bruce Pearl, little brother or something. Like, he was just swaggy. And uh, had a crazy bravado, confidence was a mate like on a like on ten, like the way he talked to you, boy, like you felt like you could do whatever. So we're, you know, I'm chopping it up with these guys. You know, they take me, uh, you know, they take me on a tour around campus and everything. And um, the campus is smaller, but it's built up. You know, so we're in the city, so it's built up. It's not built out. Um, it's a lot of buildings with like you know 16, 18 floors. Like it was built up. Um, even our dorm room, I think it had like 19 floors or something like that, like Conley Hall. It was crazy. It was, it was real, it was real, a lot, a lot of floors, something crazy. Um, but then they took me to Times Square. And at this point, I had never been to New York in my life. Like, it was the first time I'd ever been to New York. And, uh, man, it was amazing. Like, I had never seen nothing this crazy before. So, they, you know, they took me to Times Square. I'm walking around. My eyes are like bug eyed. Like, I'm just looking like, damn, this is crazy. And they took me to this restaurant called ESPN Zone. I don't know if they had a restaurant anymore, but this restaurant was so live. Like, like man, like the food was amazing. They had this motherfucking cookie Sunday. I ain't gonna hold you. This cookie Sunday is the reason I signed. <laughs> no, 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 no bullshit. But it was like, it was a big ass pan chocolate chip cookie with ice cream, and it was just like built up like a Sunday. Like it was crazy. And I'm like, damn. Like, I, if I come here, I'm going to this bitch every day. Like, I'm coming here every day. And, um, you know, it's safe to say, man, my, my visit there was amazing, man. I had a good time. I played with the guys. It was, um, man, it was amazing, man. And before I even walked off the campus, I'm like, I'm t I told them I'm coming here. Like, I don't got to go on no other visits. Uh, I'm coming here. And, um, you know, they had sent my letter of intent, and I signed it and everything. And uh, I became a blackbird. Mission accomplished. I'm a Division One athlete, man, and uh, it was a lot of hard work, a lot of sacrifice, but it's something I wouldn't change for the world, man. Um, the process, man. I had a, a kid actually hit me up the other day, you know, about the process and the training, and, and, you know, he really not a fan of all of it, but I'm telling him, like, you know, to be the best that you can possibly be, you got to be in love with the, with the whole journey, not just the playing part. It's the it's the the 5 a.m. 6 a.m. workouts. It's the running running four miles before you go to sleep. Um, the staying after school and lifting while everybody else is going to kick it and have fun. 
Um, it's a lot, man, that goes into it, man. And and because of that, because of all the work I put in before, when I, it made when I signed on that dotted line that much more of a beautiful moment for me because I, I knew the type of work I put in and I knew how much I deserved this. You know, there was no doubting how much I deserved to be where I was that day from the work I put in before. So, man, like if I, if I have anything to tell, you know, the next generation of basketball players, man, is enjoy the work, man. Enjoy the process. You know, nothing's gonna come quickly. Like it's not, it's not a fucking drive-through. Life is not a drive-through. You gotta work, man. You gotta work to get to what you, to get the things you really want and to get to the places you really wanna get to. And enjoy the process along the way, man. But with that being said, man, I hope you guys enjoy my story. Um, before you get up out of here, make sure you hit that like button. Go ahead, subscribe if you haven't, man. And click that notification bell. I appreciate it.